some time back one of my friend who is a senior consultant posted a photo of a healthy shrimp in facebook group and asked the members what's wrong with this shrimp several people responded some people said it is mineral deficiency some people said it is uh, due to molting problem and some people said it's vibriosis and so on what i wanted to convey here is here is no two people will respond in the same manner or same way for a particular problem or particular issue in aquaculture in the same way if you look at the water quality parameters of different labs there will be one column for optimum water quality parameters but no two labs will give the same values of optimum parameters why the difference comes who is right who is wrong all are right nobody is wrong i'll explain you why so let us go to the presentation before going to the presentation i would like to introduce myself some one of you may not know me myself dr amarineni ravi kumar i am an aquaculture expert uh, i am a partner in alpha biologicals and uh, founder of ravi aqua academy and uh, let's go to the subject once again let us see what is water quality water quality is the suitability of water for a particular purpose for example water quality for washing is different water quality for drinking is different and water quality for injection is different in the same way in, if you come to aquaculture water quality for farming is different water quality in the nursery is different water quality in the hatchery is different even in the hatchery there is a difference in the water quality standards required between uh, among maturation section larval rearing and algal culture okay how do you define the water quality optimum water quality parameters so normally we look for the water quality parameters in their natural habitat for example brood stock maturation section so brood stock lives in sea so what are the water quality parameters of the sea so we'll try to imitate with the plus or minus 5 to 10% for example in sea water the ph is 8.2 so we'll fix a range uh, 7.5 to 8.5 like that so let us come to ph ph is a negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration so all the labs will give the same range for ph 7.5 to 8.5 so what happens if the ph is high if the ph is high ammonia toxicity will be more if the ph is low hydrogen sulfide toxicity will be more that is why you should not be less than 7.5 and you should not be more than 8.5 let us come to salinity so if you look at the old literature the optimum salinity for a brackish water shrimp farming or marine shrimp farming is 15 to 25 why so so the iso osmotic point or in other words the salinity of the shrimp blood is 21 ppt approximately even if you do farming in zero salinity even if you do farming in uh, 40 ppt salinity the blood of the shrimp has 21 ppt so the optimum is 15 to 20, 25 P, ppt at that salinity shrimp need not spend any energy on osmotic balance but people are getting better growth in low salinity why the reason is in low salinity you have very good quality and quantity of phytoplankton and zooplankton these species of phytoplankton and zooplankton they supply enough energy and nutrients nutrients for the growth and survival of the shrimp so let us come to the alkalinity so what is alkalinity alkalinity is the total amount of titratable bases in general it is total a total of carbonates and bicarbonates so what happens if the alkalinity is low if the alkalinity is low the ph fluctuations we call it as diurnal fluctuations fluctuations from morning to evening will be very high higher the fluctuations higher the ph fluctuations 
So more the stress on the animal, more the stress, less the immunity of the shrimp. So it is susceptible to diseases. So that is why we should stabilize the alkalinity. So most of the people, if you refer the laboratory reports, the optimum alkalinity is 120 on the bottom, but higher on the higher side, on the top, there is so much of disparity. Some people it is 120 to 200, some people 120 to 300. If you go to East and uh, if you go to uh, Kaikluru region, the alkalinity of uh, uh, that uh, cholerulic is around 500. So that's why people there mentioned that uh, it has 120 to 500. So, so let us come to low, low alkalinity again. So if the alkalinity is low, how do you treat it? There are two ways. One is lime, the other one is sodium bicarbonate. But nobody will give you the same, though nobody will suggest you the same quantity of lime. The reason is, lime, we get it from the nature. We pulverize it and apply. So first thing is purity. It may be 80% purity, it may be 70% purity, it may be 90% purity. Nobody knows about the purity. No, we are not testing it. On the other hand, the solubility. Most of the times, lime is not completely soluble. So that is why we cannot clearly say you apply this much lime, your alkalinity will go up by this much. So on the other hand, so sodium bicarbonate is factory made. We know the purity. Uh, if you apply 1.6 ppm of sodium bicarbonate, your alkalinity will go up by, definitely will go up by 1, pp, 1 ppm. So people are able to clearly say the doses of sodium bicarbonate and we, uh, they are unable to say the doses of lime. And what happens with the alkalinity is high? I have gone through the literature. Uh, all the books uh, for the first, uh, uh, in the beginning, I have gone through the 1992 publication of Dr. Boyd and I got the water quality book uh, that was published in 2016 by Boyd and I have undergone a training in Thailand that was conducted by Boyd also. Nowhere in the literature it was mentioned the higher level. In all the textbooks they mentioned the lower level is 120, but nowhere in the literature there is higher level uh, that was mentioned. So that is why different labs will mention different uh, higher alkalinity levels that are optimum. And coming to the hardness, hardness is uh, uh, if you if you want to define it is simply it is the total amount of uh, divalent cations especially calcium and magnesium we will discuss in on another topic that is on minerals it depends on um, the salinity higher the salinity higher the hardness for example if you take seawater the seawater salinity will be around 6000 plus and let us come to ammonia so in the labs, what we are giving is total ammonia nitrogen. It comprises both NH3 and NH4 plus. NH3, unionized ammonia is more toxic and NH4 plus is relatively less toxic. But uh, some people, they mentioned uh, 1 ppm as uh, maximum level. It should be less than 1 ppm. That means, they are, mentioned, they are talking about total ammonia. Some lab, uh, they give the optimum level, it should be less than 0.1. That means it is unionized ammonia. So ammonia is more toxic at high pH and less toxic at low pH. So if the ammonia is high, another way of managing is maintaining the low pH. Let us come to nitrite. So nitrite, NITRITE, NO2, it uh, reacts with uh, hemoglobin and forms methemoglobin. So methemoglobin is, uh, it, they can, it cannot transfer oxygen properly, so the fish will uh, suffocate and will die. But in case of uh, shrimp, it is blue blood or colorless blood and uh, it is uh, uh, copper based uh, hemocyanin. So there is no literature, it was mentioned the upper limit of nitrite. There are no uh, uh, supporting data. That's why different labs will give different levels of nitrite as optimum. 
And coming to the nitrate, nitrate is not that toxic. I have seen 40 ppm, 50 ppm, even up to 100 ppm also. So when compared to nitrite, nitrate is very, very less toxic. So let us not to worry about this. Coming to the DO, if you little, uh, if you uh, see the old literature, they have mentioned 3.5 to 4 ppm, and more than that is optimum. But uh, practically, the farmers who are managing DO levels more than 5 ppm in the morning are able to successfully uh, manage the running mortality and all other problems and get better growth. So the latest. Uh, as per the latest uh, uh, information available, always it's always better to maintain DO more than 5 ppm. Hydrogen sulfide. So coming to the hydrogen sulfide, 0. Point, it should be less than 0. 0.03 ppm. But if you send the sample to the laboratory, so they either check with a piece, uh, test kit or colorimetry or spectrophotometry. But the sensitivity is 0.1 pp, ppm. So machines or kits cannot detect the hydrogen sulfide that is less than 0.1 uh, ppm. But your human nose is much more sensitive. We can detect even uh, as low as 0 0.01 ppm. So it's always better to use your nose as a uh, uh, testing uh, uh, for testing hydrogen sulfide and uh, other uh, other two important things I would like to mention here is some of the farmers are bringing water in cooling bottles so if you bring the cooling bottles because of acidity of the cool ring the pH is coming very very low suppose your point water pH is 8.2 if you bring the same water in a cooling bottle it will be around 7.2 to 7.3 so it get you, you get an, a, a wrong result. So it's always better not to bring water sample in a cooling bottle. So one more final point. Uh, some farmers are bringing both shrimp and water together. If you, they, they want us to check both shrimp and water in the same packet. But that particular water I have ever seen several times, the ammonia and vibrio loads are very, very uh, relatively high. Uh, when compared to the normal uh, uh, normal procedure that means you bring both the uh, uh, water and shrimp separately so that is the information that have uh, that i have on water quality parameters and optimum standards so that's all for now thank you very much if you like this presentation uh, please share it to your friends it may be useful to them thank you very much